But I think electric co-ops are are going to be doing a big part of it where they exist. Um, you but know, I think all, they're, they're all financially driven, though, dude. You know, they're going to look at it and go, "This the math doesn't make sense." No, but this is where I think the the math is different for an electric co-op, where you're the real risk to an electric co-op is losing electric demand, and so for them, they need to make sure that. Um, sorry, I'm a little bit distracted because my son who is ill is moving around a little bit. And I want to make sure it's not an emergency. <laughs> um, the electric co-op's biggest fear is that they lose uh, more population and industry. And so it, they, wanna, they want these um, broadband efforts to break even. But frankly, if you tell an electric co-op, if you only lose a few hundred thousand dollars a year and that will guarantee you a million dollars worth of electricity sales, for them, and I'm just making these numbers up, but there's a balancing act there where they're like, heck, that's a great deal. I was just talking to Ernie Staten, the, who runs the Fairlawn Fiber Network in Akron area. And he uses different economics than you do, Travis, because he runs the city. And so they put municipal money into building that fiber network, and they offer it at a reasonable price point. And one of the things it's done is it's led to more people wanting to live there and more business to the extent that the city's tax um, like uh, intake, despite the fact they haven't raised taxes, has significantly increased. The tax base has grown significantly. And so even if they're losing money on broadband, they are massively benefiting the community because they're growing the tax base with it. And that's where it's the local governments and co-ops think a little bit differently about this because of how it's not just the broadband picture, it's a wider picture.